I read this book when I lived in Canada in the 1990s. And then I read this book again when I lived in Budapest and I've just read it again. And it gets incredibly better with every subsequent reading. The first time I read this novel, I don't think I had much experience with European literature at that point. So it was quite foreign. And then having lived in Budapest for several years, it resonated much better. It is simply magical. It is perfect. It is, it is a perfect novel. There you go. I think that quite a lot of people are going to have some trouble with this book. They're going to point their fingers and say, I don't like the socially accept unacceptable behavior, but you're wrong. And I'll tell you why shortly. The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera was published, was published in English in 1984. I would say that in this novel there are three important aspects. One of them is this philosophy of lightness and heaviness, the weight of human experience, the weight of our humanity upon us and our emotions. I'm not really one for philosophy, but he deals with it in a very well, plain spoken way, which even somebody like me can understand and maybe get something from. The second bit about this book, actually the main undercurrent is the Russian occupation of what was then known as Czechoslovakia. It sets the whole series of events of this novel into motion. But at the very heart, more than 50% of the novel, the main bit is the relationship between the two principal characters, Tomas and Teresa and their beautiful love that they share for one another with quite a bit of trials and tribulations that cause them great distress and trouble and ultimately leads them to what I think is one of the greatest modern love stories in literature. Thomas is a surgeon, a very gifted surgeon, and he travels to the countryside to perform some operation. And while he's in this tiny remote village, he meets Teresa, who is the bartender in the local hotel. They chat for a little bit and he says to her, if you ever come to Prague, please look me up. And she arrives within a few days, knocking on his door with a suitcase in her hand, saying, I'm here. And he looks at her somewhat aghast, like, oh, yes, you certainly are. Thomas is, well, he's a chronic womanizer. And this is what I think most people are not going to enjoy about this book is that Thomas needs to have sex with many women. That's what he wants to do unemotionally. Like he, he does not know why we need to connect sex with love. These are very, very different things. And he wants to have sex with lots of women. He's not interested in falling in love with them. He was married once. He had a child with his first wife. She divorced him. She was quite cruel about the divorce settlement and refused to let him meet with his son. And he turned his back on them. And he said, well, if, if that's how you're going to treat me, then I'll have nothing to do with you. I'll give you the money, but that's it. You're out of my life. And Thomas's parents were disgusted with their son's behavior. And so his parents turned their back on him and they supported his ex-wife. So at one stroke, he lost a wife, a son, and his own parents. But he didn't seem to mind. He seemed to take that quite happily. You know, he's a surgeon. He has many girlfriends on the side. All of those other relationships, he was happy to drop them. And Teresa, well, she's this poor girl from the countryside who had the opportunity to meet this man, a doctor in Prague, and she took her chance, threw herself into his life. From there, the story gets quite, to me, it gets quite wonderful. Not dirty, but it feels just so completely human. There's one scene that I'm just dying to tell you about. It may be a little bit too much and perhaps you want to enjoy this bit for yourself. So I'll put a spoiler warning onto the time bar. I just, I just want to tell you this scene, but if you want to experience for yourself, stop watching now and jump ahead to Thomas has this girlfriend who he meets every couple of weeks. Her name is um, Sabina and she is an artist. She knows that Thomas has recently taken up with his new woman, Teresa, and she's not jealous, but she notices that while they are making love, she catches him mid coitus, checking the time on his watch. And she doesn't like that as if that while they're at it, he's even being conscious of time. So that afterwards, he goes to have a shower, and when he comes out of the shower, she has hidden one of his socks, refuses to admit that she has done this, 
so that he has to go back home to his wife wearing only one sock, which you can imagine what kind of a reaction that would have, right? You know, like recently I've been complaining a lot about some of the literature I've been reading that is just so overblown. Like it's so overwritten, it's so colorful and fancy and just like it's got like flowers stuffed up the ass of the writing it, and you know, and I hate that stuff. And what's brilliant about Milan Kundera is that he is so, just such a ma master craftsman with his language. He remained annoyed with himself until he realized that not knowing what he wanted was actually quite natural. We can never know what to want because living only one life, we can neither compare it to our previous lives nor perfect it in our lives to come. Was it better to be with Teresa or to remain alone? That writing is very simple, it's very direct, and it is explosive with meaning. I want to say subtlety. It's not subtlety, but it, like, it's right there, word by word. I feel so much nuance when I read that passage that it just, it's amazing. So that's what she's done. She's come from her little hotel to Prague. She sleeps with him immediately and truthfully, not, not with no prevarication. She, she falls quite ill of the flu and has to remain in his bed for a week and he nurses her back to health and during that week where she is ill he falls in love with her and realizes that he can't kick her out of his apartment and out of his life as he would have done any other of his dozens and dozens of girlfriends and this weighs on him later because of the choices he has to make and the sacrifices he has to make for their relationship, he realizes that it was just a very random bit of chance that he went there, he met her, she came to Prague, they slept together. A few hours later, she was deathly ill. And because of those serendipitous chance encounters, they formed a relationship together, fell in love in their beautiful, unique way. Milan Kundera, is um, the most famous Czech writer. There was the other guy who wrote The Good Soldier, Schweik, but I think Milan Kundera is really known as the great Czech writer. Although even that is not a very easy statement to make because he left the Czech Republic and he moved to France, to Paris, and he got French citizenship because he argued and there was trouble between him and the Communist Party, and they stripped him of his Czech citizenship for a time before he became such a celebrated European author. I think there is still quite a deal of contention between Kundera and the Czech state to this day. I think they've invited him back and they have promised him lavish degrees of celebration if he would so dine to bless them with his presence, but I believe he refuses. There is uh, some funny information that he does occasionally go back to the Czech Republic, but when he does, it's always quite clandestine. He doesn't want people to know that he's there, put it that way. So what I wanted to ask you, this is the question that's really been on my mind. So this book is, is very, like there's a lot of sex in this book, not graphic. It is mentioned he has girlfriends and he goes to meet her and he goes to meet this one. And I want to ask you, do you think that North American people are as sexy as Europeans. And I don't mean in physical appearance, I mean in inclination. When I went to live in Hungary, I felt a definite shift in the interest of all of the people around me. That in North America, I feel that there is a certain strong, almost subliminal desire for money constantly. That there is always this gravitation to wanting money. And then living in Hungary, it was sex. I felt it everywhere. Now you might say, well, that was just a certain period of your life. You, you know, you went to Hungary when you were 26 years old. I mean, that is quite a time. Hungarian women are especially beautiful. That must be said. It, it's just that I, I felt it. I felt it all the time that you would go to work at an office and you would look around and you would check the perimeter for attractive, interested partners. I didn't feel that that was in any way peculiar for people to be doing that all the time. If you went to, if you went to a party, you'd look around and say, okay, what's available? And then in North America, that physical urge is very much restrained. I feel, I, I do feel that, and please tell me if, if I'm wrong. So I'm wondering how you, you feel about that, and if you have been to Europe, and if you stayed there for an extended period of time, did you feel that base desire, like, yeah, it's on. In North America, it's the money drive, 
and in Europe there is a strong sex drive. So that is the unbearable lightness of being. There was a film, I've never seen the film, it looks good, there's that actor who I'm really fond of, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis is in it, and you know, he's remarkably handsome, which is perfect casting for Thomas. I don't know if I could see Daniel Day-Lewis as a... In, in the film, I believe, he's more of a womanizer, whereas in the book, he's very much a surgeon, you know, a surgeon with a, a womanizing hobby. Please don't point your fingers and say, oh, you know, what is that? That is the adulterer's manifesto. That is the hero's tragic flaw, okay? That's his failing as the hero of this story and it is something that causes great trouble for him and Teresa, and it is something that causes the conflict in this story. That's all I can say without giving more than I would like to away about this novel. So please, one of my favorite European novels, one of my favorite novels. This is one that you could read again and again and again. All right, thank you very much for watching. This is Grant Loves Books. This is Milan Kundera's The Unbearable Lightness of Being. I love it.